Yeah, I covered my place because they're taking pictures and all that stuff. I mean, this is what we've come to in America, huh? These guys call themselves patriots? Really? The effects of election conspiracy theories are already on full display here in the swing state of Arizona. Armed men stalking vote drop boxes, prompting voters to hide their identities, and even cover their license plates as they go to vote. If a guy's standing over there, he's got his face covered, he's got, and he's armed, what's that tell you? They don't want you to vote. Hmm. They don't want you to vote. It's an image straight out of the Jim Crow South or any authoritarian country in the world. Armed, masked men staking out drop boxes without any legal authority to do so in an effort to intimidate their fellow Americans out of exercising their fundamental right to vote. It's called 2,000 Mules. Central to all of this is the movie 2,000 Mules. It was released in May and Trump even hosted a screening of it at Mar-a-Lago. The movie falsely claims that so-called mules are casting hundreds or thousands of votes at drop boxes. That's right. All of this open aggression is based on a film by right-wing conspiracy theorist and convicted fraudster Dinesh D'Souza. That film has been debunked by dozens of experts, and it claims that vote mules cast hundreds of fake ballots for Joe Biden to steal the 2020 election from Donald Trump. That's nuts but it's an idea the right is eager to buy. But the kind of people her group are seeing are not mules. They are real voters who are now afraid. I could never come down here alone. And, you know, I couldn't do it myself. No. I, I it's scary. It's just flat out insane. It's voter intimidation. And when these armed MAGA wingnuts aren't busy scaring your grandmother half to death with their AR-15s, they're fighting tooth and nail to get ballot drop boxes banned completely. Even though there is zero evidence that ballot drop boxes make our elections less safe. Even Republicans admit that, including former Attorney General Bill Barr. The election was not stolen by fraud. And uh, I haven't seen anything since the election that changes my mind on that, including the 2000 Mules movie. <laughs> and while Bill Barr may be laughing about how insane the right's rigged election conspiracy theories are, it's anything but a laughing matter for the voters who are being harassed by vigilantes, often with the cheering support of Republican lawmakers. Now, you may be asking, if these ballot drop box observers are so concerned about voter fraud, why don't they just call police? Well, that's because in this conspiracy, the police are in on it too. According to reporting by the Daily Beast, a group connected to retired General Michael Flynn is allegedly recruiting former police and veterans to serve as so-called election watchers to monitor the monitors. And in red states across the country, it isn't enough to have armed vigilantes stalking drop boxes. Republicans want to ban them outright. In Florida, a new law led to a sharp reduction in ballot drop boxes statewide. The average voter in Palm Beach now lives nearly a mile farther from a drop box than they did in 2020. And remember, not one of those drop boxes was connected to a single incident of voter fraud in Florida. And in Georgia, where Republican Herschel Walker is neck and neck with Democrat Raphael Warnock for control of the Senate, there are now 80% fewer drop boxes than there were in 2020. And the Georgia GOP doesn't even pretend this is about fraud. They're just trying to make it harder for black Georgians to cast their ballots. In white communities, those drop boxes were unaffected by the new law. But the Republican nonsense around election fraud has certainly captivated the far-right base, and that has terrible consequences for democracy. Just listen to this incredibly candid breakdown of the situation from the chair of the Maricopa County, Arizona Board of Supervisors. They've dehumanized folks with this term mule. These are people who are exercising their right to vote in this democracy. This dehumanization that's going on in our political discourse right now is very dangerous because it does justify uh, the use of violence. It isn't a big jump to go from the conspiracies that lead armed men to stake out ballot boxes to the kind of violent action that led a QAnon fanatic to beat Paul Pelosi's head in with a hammer. In fact, 
you can make that transition without needing to jump at all. Pelosi's attacker's online presence is filled with conspiracy theories, including ones about unfounded claims of election fraud. Republicans are selling their followers a problem that doesn't exist, and then taking plainly authoritarian steps to solve a voter fraud crisis that only exists in their conspiracy-addled brains. But that has real impacts on real voters. And by some measures, experts estimate red states have made it more than twice as hard to cast a ballot compared to 2020. And Republican governors consider that to be a big victory. All of these new voter suppression laws represent the most intense attack on voting rights in decades. 14 states have empowered police to investigate any allegation of voter fraud, whether there's evidence for it or not. And across the South, 1,200 polling places that were open in 2020 are now closed. That's the largest reversal of voter access since the segregation era. And Republicans aren't hiding their tactics. Not only do they think that what they're doing is right, they think it's the only way to ensure fair elections. And by that, they mean elections where Republicans always win. American democracy is under its most acute threat in many of our lifetimes. And right now, the bad guys are winning. If Republicans retake Congress on November 8th, many of the worst voter suppression laws in the country will soon be going national. And once that happens, our country's spiral into an authoritarian hell will only accelerate. Keeping those anti-democracy Republicans out of office next Tuesday is our last best hope. If you made it to the end, thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like and consider subscribing. And leave a comment below so you can let me know what incredibly depressing story I should cover next.